Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology Channel, and we continue the series on malware and the types of malware and how you actually get them. So the next category is viruses. So we hear very often, oh, I got a virus. Well, sometimes it could be something else, but it could be a worm. It could be all sorts of things. But viruses are common, but they're not that common in a sense that if you observe the basic security of um, you know any PC user, it isn't that easy actually to get a virus. It's easy, yes, but no, just leaving your computer online uh, turned on, if it has all of the updates, um, no, viruses will not arrive like that. So a virus, what is it? It's a piece of code that it attaches itself to another program. So what happens is that you're going to download something that might be or look like the real thing, but it's got extra code in it. So you might actually get the real thing, but you'll get an extra with it. So basically, you'll get a virus that will search to do one thing, have you replicated as much as possible. So viruses do all sorts of things through a system. They can copy files, they can encrypt, they can delete stuff, they can change settings, they will create havoc on your machine. Viruses come in different ways. The most popular way people get viruses still is email, email attachments. People click on an attachment, it's an executable file, and it then infects the machine. Remember that viruses uh, need human interaction. So in general, if a virus is replicating itself, it will attach itself to other files, but it's going to wait until that file is clicked and used to execute itself and continue its work. And, of course, that means that if you're sharing a file that you found that does contain a virus because you want to share it with others, that's how it's going to spread. And it will, of course, spread uh, via email with the attachments you'll send. It will not technically, usually, because a virus does not send itself to somebody else. It actually really needs to have human interaction and sharing online, downloading of files, that's how it's going to actually spread. So to get it, you really have to do an action, and that is the way it's going to happen. Most of the time attached. A virus is never alone. It's really always attached to, to something. And because it's attached to something that often is what you want, yeah, it's difficult uh, if you don't, you know, are not careful to avoid them. That's why people that download, you know, illegal movies, download cracks for games or software because don't want to pay. These are the people that are the most vulnerable and are often always attacked. Um, as a tech guy, everybody that I've met over the years that did that all needed the tech guy to fix a, a infected computer because they always get bitten at some point. And I always tell them, you know, you wanted to have these two movies. Well, you know, now you're paying the tech guy this amount of money. You would have had three, four, five movies if you paid for them, and you would not have had a virus. So, you know, there's an interesting thing, because you want to save money by not paying for something, but in reality, you're paying a lot more because now the tech guy is going to be there, and that's costly. Downloading online of games, of software, Always do it from a known site. Do not download randomly, you know, Adobe Reader for PDF viewing. Anyways, you don't need that. It already is part of Windows, you know. Use common sense. Make sure that you know that if you have to download software, where it is. The most common download, well, is Chrome, Google Chrome. Well, make sure that you are on the Google Chrome web page, not on a look-alike fake page where the Chrome browser is also infected with other things. And you could have multiple viruses in the same code. 
of course, in email, there will be an attachment. So they're going to be something, an attachment that will execute itself when you actually click on it. And that's going to actually start the virus from spreading into your machine. Once it's in your machine, it's running. So it's doing what it needs to do. But like I said, it won't spread itself automatically. It needs always an interaction. So it's always through an infected file, an infected piece of software that you'll get the viruses. But there are other types that are autonomous, and we're going to talk about that in the next video, and they're called worms. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.